It's only sport with Martin Devlin on the platform. Brought to you by One New Zealand. Let's get connected. Go to the press conference where Coach Razor an hour ago was fielding questions from a venomous media. No, that's not the case. It never is in New Zealand. First question is around Damien McKenzie. But the way the question was asked gave Razor an out. The question should have been asked, why did you drop Damien McKenzie? And the way the question was asked wasn't like that. It was like, has Damien McKenzie been dropped? You see, there's a real subtle difference here because that means that Razor, no, he hasn't been dropped. He's been put to the bench. Why did you drop him? That's what I would have asked. Why did you drop him? Because he has been dropped. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Answer from Razor. No, we're always playing to get bone to go. You, you have to. You know, like he's played and started every game till, till now. Um, he showed some great form and we've got to give guys opportunities and build te- depth in our team. And it's a nice chance for, for Bowden to play outside uh, TJ. And they've got a combination. They've played a lot of games together and they've played a lot of games together at, at the Cape Town. So lines up nicely. See, I like you, Scott Robertson, but I don't believe that answer. I don't believe that it was all in the master plan to suddenly rest Damien McKenzie. If Damien McKenzie was playing lights out and was the guy, he would still be the guy. You don't drop the incumbent all-black first five when he's playing brilliantly and guiding you to victory. He's not doing that, which is why Bowden Barrett has the job. Again, a follow-up question should have been that. No, no, no. Scott, surely, you know, when you are the number 10, the incumbent, and you've been demoted to the bench, that means that you have been dropped. That's, That's the definition of, is it not? was never asked at the presser. This was, though. What has your message been to Damien and what do you expect of him from the bench? Oh, he's had a great season today. The areas of this game, he can get better and come on and be DMAC, you know. He can play. He's created a lot for us. He's one of the highest line, line breakers in the comp. He's, he can wave a wand and, and take a gap. So, and also come on and game manage what we need to do to, to, um, to finish the match. See, I, I, look, I... This is this is, you know this is where you start thinking that you're nitpicking, and I don't want to sound like that, but I I don't think he's had a great season to date. I mean, how do you define great? I define great being Dan Carter level. Has he been at that level? No. He's you know is he has he ever as a player been at that level? No. And I also don't want my first five necessarily to be a line breaker. That's what my midfield is. That's what my ball runners are. I want the guy to control the test match from that pivotal position that he's in. And when Razor said he can get better, yeah, he can get better, but he hasn't got better at it, has he? From the from the Dunedin test at first five, has Damien McKenzie demonstrably improved as an all-black first five from that point to Sydney? Has he? I, I see the same player. I see the same player making the same decisions and the same mistakes. Absolutely brilliant on attack when he gets it right. But we already knew that about him. What we what we wanted from him was the other side of the game, which he just at the moment can't seem to be able to produce in an all-black jersey, which is the conservative play that is necessary as an all-black first five. Next question. Why did you pick TJ Pedernalo? Oh, well, he's playing good footy. You know, they can match and match. Um, when he started, he's been great. When he's come off the, the bench, he's... Played well as well, and you got a great 19 combo. Jeez, I'll tell you what, Razor, everyone's playing well. <laughs> We've lost three matches, mate. Um, on the text line, building depth in the team, Martin. If you're building depth, wouldn't you be giving your third choice first five a crack? Again, I don't, I don't believe that the All Black jersey is about building depth. I believe the All Black jersey is about winning today, winning today, and winning today. A test match against Japan, sure. But I wouldn't put Harry Plummer into start just because, oh, we've already beaten Australia once. We've got to get out of this mentality that it's okay for the All Blacks to be half assed The All Blacks have got to be the best team playing the best rugby every time they play. That's the standard set. Um, Martin, I think Razor was pretty honest about his team's strengths and weaknesses at the beginning. I wonder if he's been told to dampen it down. Yeah, I don't know. I, I get the chance to actually interview him on Friday night. I might ask that too. I'm not sort of dropping that in thinking I'm a big note or anything. I'm just um, emceeing a gig at the Paniki Rugby Club and I get to actually interview Razor on stage. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not going to ask any curly questions. That's not the gig. That's not the deal. I mean, people love him. I love him. He's just there giving off his time before an all black test match. But if I was sitting down and doing a half-hour slot with him, yeah, I'd definitely be asking that. The Wellington Hoodoo. How important is it that this team make a statement performance in this game? 
Oh, it's really important. It's something we've addressed. Uh, something we're really well aware of, unlike the rest of New Zealand public. Uh, it's a record that we're, you know, we're not proud of. Um, and the way you deal with records is by performances. So that, that's been our main focus this week. Good performance and something that the crowd can be proud of and, and New Zealanders. Yeah. Slow finish. Slow finish. I mean, again, whoever asked this question, I don't know who it was. The All Blacks, the All Blacks haven't had a slow finish. The All Blacks haven't had a finish. The All Blacks have had a, 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 a bollock finish, haven't they? The All Blacks at the moment can't seem to get it together in the last 20, 25 minutes, can't score a point, unravel really badly and can't control a test match. But the question was, the slow finish, what work have you put in to combat that? Yeah, there's a few things that come along with it. You know, that we've looked at around the accuracy and the discipline and, you know, the experience of the group that, have, that are coming on. And, and then at the end of the day, you just focus what you need to do. What is it going to look like? So when you, you put it into action and how you execute, so focus on solutions around, around it and we train it and, and get on with it. You're on the platform. It's iOS, Martin Devlin, Lachlan War, brought to you by One New Zealand. Let's get connected. Final question from this batch from the press conference that Razor held at 12.30. And then TJ Pelinata and was it Patrick Turipalutu? Front of the media after that. We'll have some cuts from those two guys after. <laughs> Wayne Smith has been in camp. Sir Wayne, all week. What's he been up to? Just observing. You know, look, he's, he's been in and around. He's been sending a few messages as he does. <laughs> he loves a review <laughs> Sunday morning. Uh, and that's great. You know, Lou, just little observations. He's been there. He's done it. As he mentioned the other night, he's... Um, had the job a couple of times, you know. They've, um, he knows the enormity of the job and just a little bit of guidance and advice and he's just observed and does what we've done well and, and made some suggestions as well. Devlin. Unbelievable. Oh. Incredible. The platform. Well, we won't waste any time because his is precious. It's a very warm welcome back onto the show. Jamie Wall. Hello, Jamie. Yeah, kia ora, Martin. Good to be talking with you, mate. A question for you on the text. A question for Wall. When are your street kids ever going to be a Jubilee Cup contender again? That's obviously a pointed reference to your Poniki Club. Yeah, that's right. I think um, probably the best way we're going to get our hands on the Jubilee Cup is if we go and steal it like we did back in 2001. <laughs> that was a good night. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone from Maris St. Pat's is listening, yeah, that was me. That was uh-huh. you. You stole it. Yeah, yeah we stole it. Yeah, they'd won it that day. Uh, it was, uh, I think, the second ever time they had a final at the stadium. Um, and uh, a bunch of us went up there, and um, while they were celebrating, we just we just took it. What'd you do with it? Anyway, oh, I took, took it around Hotaro, uh and then left it out in the middle of Kabuni Park for them to come and pick up. I was just thinking, do we have cell phones back then? What did, did you message anyone? Nah, nah, we got a, we got a few photos on an old, um, you know, one of those cardboard disposable cameras. That, yeah. Yeah, that was a dog's war back then. So, yeah, anyone from Maris is listening, ha-ha. Eat it. That was funny. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, what yeah. do they call your street kids, mate? Oh, it's just a derogatory nickname that um, Maris came up with us, and then we co-opted it for ourselves. So if I if I say street kids to it's another fine. member of Pornicky, it's all right. It's kind of like the N-word, really. It's like, okay. I can say it, but you can't. You can't, all right. I'm looking forward to having a couple with you uh, tomorrow night, and also the privilege of sitting down with the all-black coach and also Sir Wayne Smith and Morgan Tudanui at the function as well. It's uh, never a job when you get asked to do this kind of stuff, is it? Yeah, it's going to be a great night. I'm really happy you can be there and those other guys as well. So you get to meet uh, the rest of the uh, rest of the whanau at, um, at Pornicky. Um, we're really going to be really glad to have you there. Thanks, brother. All right, you were at the press conference. First, about Damien McKenzie. Um, has he been mm. dropped or not? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think so uh, from what we could figure out because – they could have actually just left him out of the squad completely and just said, no, no, he's going to get a rest because that logically does make sense. He's he started, he's one, one of only two players, uh, him and Adi Savio, the only players who've started every single test match uh, this year. And this one had always been kind of penciled in as like, well, if they're going to ro- rotate the team or the, the guys who've put in the big minutes, this would be it. So Scott Robson could have just left him out completely and said like, oh, no, you know, we, you know, we, this was always part of the rotation and, and, and it would have made sense. Instead, he's benched him. Uh, which does mean that he has been dropped, and he sort of admitted as much, like without really kind of saying it within the within the press conference we just had. So, so yeah, it's um, it's just probably a way of saying like, okay, well, what's Bowden going to bring to this position? What can we see out of him? Uh, but he heavily intimated that McKenzie will be coming on with a big chunk of minutes at the end uh, to close the game out and see what he can do in that role as well. So, I guess it's sort of a bit of both. 
Jamie, I'm just thinking ahead into the Northern Hemisphere tour. So if McKenzie's not starting this game and Bowden Barrett is, that would say to me that, you know, OK, we've got one more match and that is against Japan on the way there. And I don't think any of these guys will play that match. And so therefore, who starts against England with three massive test matches back to back to back? And I'm not discounting Italy either. But that would signal to me that, that Bowden Barrett is the number one, number 10 again. Is that right? Yeah, I, I, well, y- yes and no. I mean, it's it's sort of it's a question mark because, again, you can just go like, okay, well, maybe he's just using this one as a way of just saying, like, okay, well, what, what can Bowden do with this with this back line, with this team? Um, but, at the, but just given that the amount of discussion that we've had about Damien McKenzie's form and, you know, coming off the back of that game last week where, you know, he made a couple of key er- errors there. I will say one thing about him, though. Like, his goal kicking was the difference between the All Blacks winning and losing that game. Um, it was absolutely crucial, and he slotted a couple of like, you know, really important sideline conversions. So that part of his game, I'm really happy to have seen as, as you know, um, on, on we can we can count on it uh, to win for the All Blacks to win the Test matches. Um, I just think that there's just always going to be a question mark over McKenzie. It's just it's just always going to be that way. He's just that kind of player. Uh, so I guess that's just going to keep going um, until we get to Twickenham and see what team gets rolled out. Because like you said, we're not going to learn anything out of that Japanese game. I feel like that's going to be Harry Plummer's yeah, same, uh, same. team that he's going to yeah. be running. So mm. we'll just we'll probably be able to have a better idea of it after this test match. If, if Bloden goes and plays the lights out and they put 50 on them and break this bloody curse that seems to be happening in Wellington, um, then you have to think that he's, he's the man for the job. Where are we at with Roy Gard? Has anyone been asking about that? Again, I'm looking at the, the end of year tour and, you know, mm-hmm. TJ's, you know, he's, he's running out of time here. Uh, Ratim is the, the, the kind of the heir apparent, but both of those guys are behind Roy Gard, given Roy Gard's super rugby form. But then he has to come back into the test side, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So we did, that did get asked um, today. It, it's looking like he's almost certainly likely to be on the India tour uh, as long as he gets through these games with uh, counties in the next few weeks because he obviously has to play some play some rugby. So you'd think those are the three halfbacks that are going away uh, on this tour. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's all like uh, um, Roy Gard's prog- uh, progression back from injury is going ahead of schedule. They, they weren't actually originally expecting him back till next year. So, um, yeah, he's, de- he's definitely on track to be part of this Northern Hemisphere tour. Our midfield combination, these two guys between them have played over 150 tests. The bizarre thing is, I wonder how many they've ever played together, A or B, Enrico, in, in those positions. Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't think it's that many because um, as consistent as Anton Leonard Brown has been, he's he hasn't been like a nailed-on starter for no, a while. No, no. Um, now, because, and that's, I mean, I guess mostly due to Jordy uh, Barrett really kind of taking that position and the skill set that he offers is also as an extra goal kicker. Uh, plus Rico's, you know, uh, transformation into an out-and-out centre uh, has meant that Leonard Brown's versatility value has been sent, made him sort of the a very good bench option. Um, but then again, I don't think they're losing much having him there. Um, like I said, he's probably been the most consistent All Black uh, over the last, well, probably in his whole career really. I can't remember him really, ever really having a bad game. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I don't think the All Blacks are losing much uh, with this midfield shakeup. In terms of the loose forwards, uh, again, we've obviously, you know, we're still missing Ethan Blackhead, eh? hamstring. Um, Dalton Papali, where, where is he at? Is he off the injured list? Is he IR? What, where's he gone? Uh, he's been overtaken by Luke Jacobson. Again, that got asked at the at the press conference, and um, Robertson did confirm that you know it just came down to a selection call between Papa Lee and Jacobson for that bench spot, and Jacobson is the man for the job right now. So you know that's certainly a, 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 like it's a good conversation around those guys, but um, you know he's he's he didn't leave anything even though I'm guessing about why. Um, why that's happened. It's just, it feels like uh, probably he's just kind of fallen down the depth chart. Would you expect Blackadder to be back in this team if he was fit? And in, in which case, how does the loose forward trio rearrange itself? Uh, yeah, they, uh, that again um, was confirmed um, today that uh, apparently Blackadder could have played 
uh, this game, but they've just decided, just given his history of injuries, just to let him rest and give him some time off. Maybe he'll chuck in a game for Tasman um, before the end of your tour, but that's just kind of how they're managing him. And obviously the way that Wallace Satidi's playing, um, it's not like they need to rush him back either because obviously Satidi's uh, playing fantastic rugby at the moment. So I don't think it's, it's such a bad thing to be giving um, him another test start. No, oh, I just love. I mean, he played lights out, didn't he, uh, in uh, Joburg, Ethan? And I mean, again, we're all, you know, thinking, God, we finally found a number six. Well, we may have found two number sixes. All right, yeah. two before a couple more questions. Um, this guy, you know, again, like you know, I think thirty-three or thirty-four tests. Well, the first twenty-five or twenty-six, you know, you think what you, know, you probably can't actually remember anything he did. But this year, this guy has come on leaps and bounds. He is absolutely cement in that second row, isn't he? Well, um, I presume you're talking about two by Yeah, uh, yeah. But yes, uh, that is that's 100 percent correct. I think what's happened is he's um, actually got the muscle mass to fulfil the role that they want him to play, which is essentially to be like a Maro Otoji uh, type who lock slash loose forward. Does a bit of wrecking, um, yeah. Because uh, he does. He he really likes getting in and doing that dirty work around the breakdown. He won some really key penalties in those test matches in South Africa. And all of a sudden, um, the really bare-looking cupboard of All Blacks second row is lo- actually looking really there healthy yep. right now because now Patrick Toipolotu is back as well. I think he's going to add quite a lot on the bench because the one thing they'll be missing on the bench is experience. And he's bringing in, you know, obviously leadership and experience to that role uh and scott you know scott barrett's obviously there i, I kind of feel like scott barrett kind of needs to step up he's not in the best of form at the moment um perhaps he just knows, sort of needs to sort of get his head out of being the captain uh as well but right now the all black locking department is looking pretty pretty healthy and it's because to is finally becoming the player that we, we were hoping he would be and it's it's great to see all right, one more question or two more questions before we let you go. And I thank you so much, mate, because I know you're very busy at the moment. I looked down that that playing first 15, and aside from Satiti, uh, they've all got plenty of experience. Any All Black that's played over 20, 25 games, plenty of experience. But you look at our bench, 13, 13, 2, 5, 23 for Jacobson, who you feel has been around a long time. Uh, Ratima, 7 or 8 tests. Havili has hardly played. McKenzie's got over 50. But that is a bench which is lacking in experience, test match experience. Yeah, that's right, and and it's uh, it's one thing that we talked to Scott Robertson about uh, while we were away in South Africa, and he said like, look, the reason why the bomb squad, the Springboks reserves, are so effective is because they have experience on the bench. They're able to put guys like Malcolm Marks, who's played eighty odd tests. Um, you know, the rest of their the rest of their forward reserves have you know well of fifty tests each. Like that's the difference, but that's why that scheme is so effective because they, they, they've been in all these situations before. The All Blacks haven't. And, you know, to be fair to Scott Robinson, he can't invent experience. It has to be uh, experienced <laughs> in order for it to happen. So I think we're just going to ha- have to just get used to the fact that um, there's going to be – there's not exactly a whole bunch of 50, 60 test All Blacks that he can bring in specifically to be bench players. If they were to do what the South Africans are doing, they would have to reverse their selection policy and put guys like Cody Taylor – on the bench, they kind of tried it in Cape Town by putting TJ and Bowden there. It didn't quite work because they weren't able to really influence the game that they would because the Springboks' um, whole thing is that they bring on a whole bunch of fresh, experienced forwards. Um, doing it in the backs, it's like, yeah, okay, it might it might work. You're just bringing on fresh legs, but you're bringing on like a whole different set piece um, picture that the, the opposition has to deal with. And the All Blacks just kind of can't do that at the moment. It's going to take a few years before they're going to be able to have that sort of experience to bring off the bench. Finally, uh, a text has come in. You guys are absolutely one-eyed and delusional about Sam Kane, TJ and others. Um, it go, I'll, I'll, I'll read the rest of the text later, but I just want the bit about Sam Kane. 100 tests. I really like this guy. I really rate this guy. Um, I think he's been an excellent All Black, and I think that he's really suffered from the fact that, you know, when, when, when the guy playing your position before you was Pelé or Maradona, and you take mm. his jumper. You know, everyone's always going to compare you to that guy, and you're never going to reach those heights. But where do you rate him as a 100-test All Black, and especially as a number seven? Not Forget the captaincy thing, just as a number seven in all the All Blacks that you've seen play that position. Oh, I think on his day, he was um, one of the best in the world because I think that one of the things I, rated the, I rate the most about Sam Kane is his physicality. Like, that guy will tackle anything. You know, he'll tackle an elephant if you send it at him. Um, I can't help but respect that. He's a he's a great player. Um, he's a guy who's absolutely put his body on the line for the All Black. He's literally broke his neck yeah, for yeah. the All Black jersey. Mm. And no matter what else you think about him, like, you should be respecting him simply for that, for that fact. That nothing, I don't think much embodies the All Black 
legacy, the All Black spirit and everything than what you're willing to do uh, to win a test match. And the guy literally broke his neck. And you can think anything you want about him any other way, about captaincy, about, I don't know, the way he's sort of come off in, in public, because I think that could, probably could have been better. Uh, but you cannot, you ca- absolutely cannot deny that the guy is willing to do anything to win test matches for the All Blacks. And those are the sort of All Blacks we need. It's only sport with Martin Devlin on the platform. Brought to you by One New Zealand. Let's get connected.